Away! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, fought crime and criminals throughout the western United States. But justice meant more to him than the letter of the law. And if a man or woman deserved a second chance, the famous masked rider was always ready to help them. Return with us now to the thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Crow Ridge! Saddle's waiting on the trail ahead! Night had fallen. Two men were camped in a small wood some miles to the east of Crow Ridge. One was masked, the other an Indian. They rested upon their blankets in silence while their mounts grazed nearby. Finally, the masked man lifted his head. The Indian looked at his companion inquiringly. What manner? Listen, fellow, don't you hear it? Oh, now me hear him. Someone off to the south there. Oh. I don't like it. I chose this spot for a camp because it was out of the line of travel. What would anyone be doing here at this time of night? Me not know, boys. Oh, that sounds like trouble. One on a heap scared. I think they've stopped. I don't hear horses. Uh, yeah, come on. Uh, what we do? We'll see what this is about. Get horse. Leave the horses. They aren't far off. The trees and brush that muffles the sound. That's right. This way. They walk quietly. They won't announce themselves until we know what's up. Uh, to the left. Now that brush. No, no, you can't do that. Don't shoot. I'm not far now. Plenty of moonlight. We should be able to see them clearly. This way more. Oh, please don't. Oh, no, 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 no. There, fella. See him? Yes, a little closer. You've got to listen. You're making a bad mistake. I ain't the fella you want. I can't be. Why, I've never seen you before. This is the first time I was ever in this part of the country. What did you have against somebody you don't even know? It's your blasted one. But look, you took my shooting iron. You got me covered. I wouldn't have a chance to get away, even if I did make a break for it. So the least you can do before you finish me off is to tell me what for. <laughs> And likely you wouldn't believe me if I told you. What? <laughs> you know why you got to die, mister? That's what I'm asking you. Because <laughs> you got a red beard. What? I told you you wouldn't believe it. What in places has my beard got to do with it? The fellow that hired me to scribe you said you had a red beard so they couldn't mistake you. Well, that's you. So having a red beard is what's getting you killed. Then somebody hired you. Sure. Don't think I'd do this for nothing, do you? Who is it? Forget it. I wasted too much time on your fool questions already. Just and tell me you're who... going. Answers won't be no help, no how. All right. Then we are. Uh, Hold it. Gonna... Hey, what the? What the... Hey, you take it. Oh! You take his gun. You just bet I will, stranger. But who are you? 
Where'd you and the engine come from? What? Save it. Tano, uh, get this fellow back to camp. We'll ask him some questions of our own. Uh, me take him. You'll you quiet. Come along, stranger. We'll find out just why you were marked for murder. prisoner marching sullenly in front of them, they returned to camp. Then, the Lone Ranger grasped the gunman by the shoulders and turned him so that his back was against a large tree. Stand right there. Quit shoving me. You're lucky you don't get worse. Tie him up, Tonto. Uh, me get rope. You can't hold me. You ain't got no right to tie me up. No? You better not if you're savvy what's good for you. A couple minutes back, you stated you were going to kill this man. I don't have... He asked you a number of questions. But you refuse to answer. And I ain't talking for you, neither. We'll see about that. Got the rope, Kimosabe? Uh-huh. Here, yeah, rope. Make sure he can't escape. He won't get Just away. Just as sure as I'm standing here, you fellas are going to be sorry I'll for this. I'll get to you in a moment. You stranger, what's your name? Me? My handle's Matt Rourke. You said this was your first visit to this section. That's so. I've been ranging around the West Forks country over Wyoming way. He's come here thinking maybe I'd sell out back home and settle in this part of the country. I see. You've got no idea why anyone would want to do away with you? I, I'm clean beat. How can a fellow make enemies in a place he's never been? Someone had a motive. This fellow's admitted he'd been hired. Well, I ain't denying it. All I can say is that I, I don't know what the motive could be. There's one possibility. Huh? What's that? You know anyone here? What I mean is this. Someone you knew... Someone who had been an enemy of yours in Wyoming might now be living near Crow Ridge. He might have seen you and hired this fellow to get rid of you. Shucks, I don't know anyone here. I... <laughs> I'll, I'll take that back. There is somebody I know. But if you can figure why she'd want me killed, then you're a heap smarter than I am. Who is it? Well, shucks, a, a girl I used to know when she was living with her folks near my pa's old place. We was just about of an age... She disappeared when her pa and ma died, and I, I never did know what become of her till today. You still haven't told me her name. Uh, Abby Sanders. Run into her in a store in town. Seemed to fluster her some. Shucks, who wouldn't be flustered to see somebody they'd known 30 years before? <laughs> you, you'd have an awful time making poor Abby into a killer. Abby Sanders. Talk with her long? Oh, just for a second or two. Did she tell you what had happened to her recently? Hmm? Happened to her? It was discovered she was the heir to a fortune amounting to about $100,000. The estate was left by an old lady named Sarah Randolph. Her lawyer searched for more than a year to find a relative who could claim the estate. And just by accident, it was found that Abby was a distant relation. She'll soon be a wealthy woman. Well, doggone good for Abby. You say it was just an accident she come into it? According to the story that's being told, it seems that she's been housekeeper to Judge Grevy and his wife for the last 12 years. Several days ago, the judge knocked Abby's sewing basket to the floor. In replacing the contents, he discovered a picture and some old letters that established the relationship. Abby hadn't known of it herself. Just like Oliver's storybook. And she hasn't had an easy time of it, from what I've heard. This will make things much easier for her. Say, that's the best news I've heard for a month of Sundays. My gosh, I'm going to look her up again and tell her just how glad I am to hear it. It doesn't look as though she'd have a motive for wanting you out of the way. Now well, we'll see what this fellow has to say. You... What's your name? Try and find out. That's the way you're going to act, huh? Well, we can... You say... look here. What is it, Hunter? It's cash. Let's see that. Where'd you get it? It belonged to him. Quite a lot of money here. Several hundred dollars. So this is yours, huh? Doggone right it is. You take that and you're stealing. I don't want it. I wonder, though... Well? I wonder if this isn't what you were paid by whoever hired you. What if it is? You've been paid, so you have nothing to lose by telling us who gave you this. You'd better talk. Go to blazes. I'm giving you good advice. Matt here owes you something for your attempted murder. If he doesn't care to give you what you've got coming, Tonto might enjoy working on you. <laughs> what do you mean? Show him your knife, Tonto. <laughs> uh, here. Your knife. Maybe you've heard that Indians have their own ways of making prisoners talk. You can do as you wish. I'd better tell you, however, that if you won't talk, then Matt and I will take a little walk while Tonto... Hey, you can't do that. Why not? What mercy would you have had on Matt? 
I was just joking, just, just throwing a scare into him. I'd never have gone through with it. You say that now. Honest, I, if I told who hired me, he'd get me, no matter what. You could clear out of the district. Oh, no, well, no. Well, you've chosen. Come along, Matt. Yeah. Tanto, you can do as you wish. Just see that he talks. I won't ask you how you persuaded him to talk. <laughs> him. Him talk. Well, now, wait. Don't leave me here alone with no murder and redskins. Well? I, I'll tell you what you want to know. Very well. Who hired you? Smiley. Luke Smiley. A lawyer? Yeah. You know him, Matt? Never heard of him before. There's something strange about this. Here, Silver. Well, I should think there was something strange. I'd call it that when a fellow I don't even know wants to get rid of me. That isn't what I meant. Tonto, saddle Silver for me. I'm riding to town. Uh. Wait. What do you mean, that wasn't what you meant? Luke Smiley's a lawyer. Yeah? And it happens that he's a lawyer representing Abby Sanders in a claim to the Randolph estate. Matt, Abby may be a friend of yours. She may be the most kind-hearted woman in this district. Nevertheless, there's some connection between her and the attempt to take your life. Later that same night, the Judge Grevy and his wife Ida, after spending the evening with Luke Smiley, rose to depart. Abby Sanders, who had accompanied them, hung back. Hey, you ain't coming with us, Abby. Well, I, I got some business to talk over with Mr. Smiley, ma'am. Well, don't be too long. Good night, Luke. Night, Judge. We'll leave the door unlocked for you, Abby. Thank you. Now then, what's the matter with you? Mr. Smiley, I... I've seen an old friend of mine this afternoon. I know it. You told me. He he said he'd look me up this evening and wanted to talk over old times. Very nice. But he never come. He never showed up. No. Don't talk to me like that, Mr. Smiley. You, you always act as though you was laughing at me. <laughs> I am. But I... Now, you listen to me, Abby. This man, uh, what's his name? Matt. Matt Rourke. Well, you say he promised to pay a call this evening, but didn't. No, you're excited about it. I know he meant to come. Maybe he did uh, at the time. But how do you know uh, what happened? Perhaps he forgot. Maybe he had business to attend to. Uh, maybe he left town and won't be back again. For your sake, I hope that's just what he did. Uh, for my sake? He could spoil everything for you, couldn't he? Yes, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. And... Uh, you wouldn't want that to happen, would you? Oh, I, I don't know anymore. I just don't know. Mr. Smiley, will you swear to me you didn't do nothing to Matt? Will you tell me it's the honest truth you never had him harmed somehow? <laughs> what ever put a thought like that in your head? Well, I, it's the only thing I seem able to think of when he never come like he said he would. You're being silly. Forget to worry about others. You've got enough worries of your own. Don't you realize that if anything goes wrong, you and I are out $100,000? That's money that isn't found every day in the week. Oh, I, I wish that... Wish what? You... You just get mad if I tell you. Out with it. All right, I will tell you. I wish you would. I don't want to go through with it, Mr. Smiley. What? I thought having all that cash would be so fine and it'd make up for not coming by it honest, but, but I've had to lie to folks that have been good to me. I've got so I can't look nobody in the eye anymore. Who are you? Please, Mr. Smiley, please. I, I just can't go on with it. I just can't. No? Can't you see how I feel? So, to save your squeamish feelings, you expect me to give up $100,000. Well, I... Will you listen to me? I'm getting that money. You can't stop me. Nobody can stop me. And if you or anybody else gets in my way, he'll wish he hadn't. Oh, Silver! Oh, curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger, sent to Luke Smiley's home by the gunman's confession, raced back to camp with the information he had gained. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, oh, oh. What'd you do, stranger? Where, where have you been? I acted on what this fellow told us, and I believe I partially learned why Smiley wanted your death. By the way, have you found out what this killer calls himself yet? Uh, him name Pecos. Pecos, eh? Look here, mister. I've told you what I could. You gonna let me go? Not yet. Maybe I was going to kill this fella, but I didn't, did I? You can't make me pay for something I didn't do. Perhaps we could, perhaps not. That isn't the point. But I don't... I think you're going to be useful to us. If you are and Matt agrees to it, you'll have a chance at freedom. If you won't follow orders, you'll be turned over to the law. Maybe you could beat a trial. You know best about that. I've got an idea, though, that you have a reputation that wouldn't help you in a court of law. What do I have to do? I'll tell you that later. Just a second. Yes? You said you found a reason why this here lawyer wanted me out of the way. I'll believe what you tell me, stranger. I'd sure hate to think that Abby was mixed up in it. She is, however. Yeah? But not in the way you fear, Matt. Yeah. You mean she didn't have nothing to do with hiring this polecat here? She didn't. What was it you found out? That there's a fraud of some kind. And that somehow Abby has no right to the fortune she's claiming. You don't say. I believe from what I heard that Abby regrets her part in the affair and that she's obeying Luke Smiley from fear. The rotten skunk. Oh, I'd like to get my hands on that hombre in place. Later, maybe. Not now. Huh? For the present, you'll play dead. Dead? As long as Smiley thinks you dead, I believe we can break up his game. Alive? Well, we probably could anyhow. But not without involving Abby. She's not guiltless, Matt. Nevertheless, a woman who has lived a life as hard as hers has some excuse for being tempted. And if possible, we're going to bring Smiley to justice while keeping Abby in the clear. Stranger, I like your style. That's just what I'd have wanted done. Tonto, you'll have to make a disguise for me. Uh Uh-huh. And what you do? Matt will stay here. Pecos and I will go to town. You came, Asabi. You'll have your part to play also. Uh, Me do it. Good. You, Pecos, you're going to take my orders? They're going to get me in bad? Not if you do exactly as I say. But what about afterwards? What happens to me then? Matt has something to say about that. Matt, if Pecos helps us bring Smiley to justice, will you agree to let Pecos go? Uh, He's a skunk and a hired killer. But the man that's hired ain't as bad as the man that hires him. He helps me get Smiley, and for all of me, he can clear out. Agreed, Pecos? Just tell me what to do. morning, Luke Smiley saw a horseman draw his mount to a stop in front of his office. The lawyer pushed back his chair, rose to his feet, and... That blasted fool! Smiley! You confounded idiot! Listen, what are you doing here? I told you to clear out. You said if I paid you in advance, you'd get out of this part of the country and stay out. But I tell you... You did as I told you? Yeah, but listen... Then in heaven's name... Blasted, Mr. Smiley, give me a chance to talk. I done what you told me. I got that red-bearded fella. But things went wrong. He got away from you? No. You drilled him? Yeah, I drilled him, but the... That's all you had to do. That's all they give you orders to do. Now get out of here before Where's I... Mr. Smiley, I was seen. What? Two fellas seen me do the job. Why, you blundering half I couldn't help it. I took him to the woods like you said to. How was I to know them fellas was camped there? I couldn't guess it, could I? Couldn't you have made sure first? I look close with them woods in the dark and give that hombre a chance to break away. Who saw you? Where are they now? Well, they were strangers there. I don't know where they are. Then how do you know you were seen? They, well, they chased me. That's why I just not got here. It took me most of the night just to give them the slip. And if you didn't, then you've brought those men right to me. I can... Right. What? You... Stand right where you are. But don't kill me, mister. It was this fella hired me. I was just obeying orders. Don't shoot. Boy, don't... You dirty double-crosser. I'll... Hold it. You... Reach for that gun and I'll let you have it. You've got nothing on me. But plenty on this fellow here. All right, you. We're going to the sheriff's office. Oh, no, no, wait. I ain't gonna take the whole blame. He hired me. Honest, he did. Here, look. Look at this cash. He'd give it to me for the killing. Anybody in town will tell you I never had this much cash on me before last night. Don't that prove I ain't lying, don't it? You just... Stand back. I'll... I heard you, Luke Smiley. I heard all you said. You had Matt killed. I knew last night something had happened to him. I could just feel it. Close the door, Tonto. Uh, oh, wait, listen. I done all the waiting and listen, I'm gonna. I had all I'm gonna have to do with your crooked work. I should never listen to you in the first place. I, 
I was wrong, and I know I was. Don't think I could have gone through with it anyhow, but, but now that the engine brought me here so I could learn how you killed Matt, I'm through. Do you hear me? I'm through. And, I, and I'll tell the law everything I know. I don't think that's going to be necessary, Emmy. <laughs> but I... I think after I've had a little talk with Smiley here, he's going to protect you and like it. <laughs> Sending Abby, Tonto, and Pecos away, the Lone Ranger served Luke Smiley with an ultimatum. You're in a bad spot, Luke. Right now, you face not only a charge of fraud, but a charge of murder as well. You can't prove either one. Don't try to bluff it out, Smiley. It doesn't pay to bluff when you know your bluff will be called. I tell you... As far as the fraud is concerned, all Abby has to do is to go to the law with her story. There'll be an investigation, and the truth will come out soon enough. If she does that, she'll be in just as bad as I am. She won't dare. I don't care what she threatened. She won't. She will. And for a very good reason. What reason? Because you and I are going to make a bargain. Bargain? What kind of a bargain? Your life against Abby's freedom. I don't get it. We both know that Pecos will tell what happened last night if he's arrested. It'll be easy enough for the sheriff to find the place where Pecos says he shot Matt. That's all the evidence the law will require. You and Pecos will hang. If you're going to turn me over to the law for that killing, do it now and get it over with. Whether I turn you in or not depends entirely on you. On me? Go to the law. Judge Grieby, if you wish. Tell the law that your scheme to get the Randolph estate was yours entirely. That you threatened Abby's life if she didn't agree to play her part. And perhaps nothing will be said about the murder. I, uh, I'm to make it look as though Abby was forced into the scheme? Right. And if I do, you, uh... You won't tell about my hiring Pecos to kill Matt Rock? I won't. But uh, what if the law finds Matt's body? What if they suspicion Pecos and make him talk and he implicates me? I give you my word that won't happen. How do I know what your word is worth? You don't. But I can tell you this. Huh? If you refuse, you know you'll be held for murder. Whether you accept my proposition or not. Your only chance is to do what I say. A sentence for fraud will get you a prison term. The other will see you hung. If, uh, if I could believe you... You can. I, uh, I, uh... Well? Uh, you've got me. I've got to take your terms. And I'll keep my word as long as you keep yours. <laughs> An hour later, Mrs. Grevy, returning home from a visit with friends, found her puzzled husband trying to comfort Abby. <laughs> Heavenly day. What's this about? Abby, whatever's happened? Please, please don't make me tell yes, you. what is it? Please don't ask me. I can't get a word out of her. Here now, Abby. Why don't you tell us what's troubling you? Maybe we could help. No, no. Get in there. What the... All right, Smiley. Yeah, Judge Grevy. Do your talking to him. Hey, oh, wait. Or shall I do the talking? I... I'll tell. Mr. Smiley, what is He'll it? He'll explain. Now, look here, stranger. Judge, I'd advise you to wait until you've heard what Smiley has to say. Talk. I... I schemed it, Judge. I schemed the whole thing. Abby wasn't to blame at all. Schemed? Schemed? What in blazes are you talking about? I... I fixed it to look as though Abby was related to Sarah Randolph, as though she inherited the money Mrs. Randolph left. Land sakes, whatever are you talking about? I think I'd better explain it after all. Judge, you were tricked, and tricked cleverly. Hmm? Tricked? I've heard of the evidence that convinced you Abby was entitled to the Randolph estate. Why, of course she's entitled to it. I found that evidence myself. What kind of nonsense is this? I'm not sure what this is all about, but there's one thing I can say for certain. Yes? Any talk of trickery on Abby's part is... is just poppycock. Why, she didn't know herself that she was entitled to the estate until I told her. If it had been a fraud, she would have tried to convince me, not me, her. That's just where Smiley was clever. Huh? As I heard the story, you accidentally spilled Abby's sewing basket. When replacing her things, found several open letters. That's correct. You saw enough at first glance to make it important to look further. When you did... 
It appeared that Abby's mother had been distantly related to Sarah Randolph. So distantly, in fact, that Abby had never known of the relationship. Yes, Now, wait. What... what happened was this. Smiley forged those letters. He knew that if Abby herself came forward with a claim, it would be investigated. The truth probably discovered. So those letters were placed where, sooner or later, either you or your wife would find them. It didn't matter when. For a prize of $100,000, Smiley could afford to be patient. You mean finding them myself convinced me they were authentic? Well, didn't it? Why, that's just what it did. Abby, you've deceived us. You had One no... moment. Smiley has already confessed that he forced her to fall in with his scheme. Is that true? Yeah, it's true, Judge. I, I made her do it. Threatened her. Threatened her life. Don't you think, in view of what Smiley has just confessed, that you can afford to forget the part Abby played in this, Judge? Well, I... Ezra, if you hurt poor Abby after what this scheme and Polk had just admitted, I'll never speak to you again as long as I live. Now, I... You know me better than that. I, um, I reckon I can figure out a way to see she don't come to harm. Good. Did you hear that, Abby? Did you hear what the judge promised? Well, it, it's more than I deserve. Perhaps, but it's certain that you were never as much to blame as Smiley. And I'd like to ask you just one question. Yes? Could Matt Rourke have exposed you? Did he know enough about you so that you couldn't have carried out the deception? He, he did. Poor Matt. Matt? Matt Rourke? Who's he? You promised you wouldn't tell. I promised you wouldn't hang for murder, and you won't. Murder? What You've heard enough to jail him, Judge? You have all the evidence you need? Enough to jail him and keep him there for the most of his life, stranger. Good. Smiley. Well? You may be interested to meet a man who's been anxious to meet you. Who's that? Look. Matt! Matt Rourke! Alive and kicking. You tricked me, blaster! You made me confess when I didn't have to. I'll You'll head for the sheriff's office. And if you got notions of revenging yourself on a masked man, forget him. In a case like that, it'd please me to deal with you myself. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.